Okay, let's bring in Devin Dwyer. This would be uh, appear to be a major victory for the FDA this morning. A huge, in, a huge win, David, for not only the agency, but also the drug industry, which came out in force against this challenge to Mifepristone, warning that if courts could strip away the availability of some individual drug that had been approved by scientists for decades, it could imperil access to any number of medicines, considering things like uh, special life-saving drugs developed with embryonic stem cells or HIV AIDS treatments or fertility drugs for IVF. So uh, the, the industry today is, is breathing a big sigh of relief as well, David. Devin, thank you. Let's bring in Kate Shaw, our legal analyst. And, and Kate, uh, obviously this uh, post-Roe America, the rollback of Roe versus Wade, a lot of eyes on this particular decision this morning. Uh, what do you make of the unanimous decision here today that comes uh, in the wake of the overturning of Roe in this country? Well, enormous on the ground impact, David, in that mifepristone, as you said, is the most common way of ending an early pregnancy today, particularly in the post Dobbs era. Uh, and so right now, mifepristone remains available on the terms that the FDA has decided um, are safe and consistent with, you know, the effective use of the drug. And so I do think that the FDA and the drug industry in general um, and, you know, pregnant women who wish to terminate early pregnancies are all breathing a sigh of relief today. I mean, I would say one thing, which is that so this case is over and the drug remains available on the terms of the FDA has set. But there's another case waiting in the wings, actually brought by states instead of you know, individual doctors who object to abortion and to mifepristone. And those states may have an easier time convincing lower courts and even the Supreme Court that they have the legal right to be in court challenging mifepristone and its availability. So I wouldn't say that this issue is definitively resolved for all time, even though this case is and mifepristone remains available. Um, but in the short term, at least, any efforts to restrict access to mifepristone, I think, will be directed at the FDA and the executive branch because, you know, a different president could make a different set of directives. The FDA could change its decision about mifepristone. So, you know, I think this issue is far from definitively resolved, even though this case is over. Yeah, no question about that. So, Kate, essentially, uh, again, big picture here, uh, the issue of abortion rights, the Supreme Court has uh, signaled with the overturning of Roe, uh, belongs at the state level. And today, in particular, when it comes to mifepristone, uh, they're saying this, uh, it still belongs to the decision making with the president and the FDA. FDA, though, as you point out, uh, those who want to bring a case involving the abortion pill could and we say and might again, this is not the case, this, the situation that we're looking at this morning, but might have um, better luck, if you will, at least getting the, the case considered if they bring this up at the state level. Well, that's absolutely right, but actually even in federal court. So actually a couple of states have intervened in the lower court in an aspect of this litigation. So I think it's just a question of when and how these same questions get presented to the federal courts and ultimately to the Supreme Court, but with a different group of plaintiffs, say states that are anti-abortion states who might be, who are making essentially the argument that the availability of mifepristone makes it difficult for them to enforce their complete abortion bans. And so they have a right to be in court raising these legal objections. The substantive objections are to the process of the FDA used to approve mifepristone and then relax the restrictions on it. Um, so all of that, I think, is, you know, a couple of years out, probably. So, Kate, just bottom line here, mifepristone, the abortion pill, remains available uh, in the same way that it is uh, going into today's decision uh, because of this unanimous decision from the court. But you've made it very clear that the issue uh, is far from over here, at least when it comes to mifepristone. Absolutely. That's right, David. Kate Shaw with us as well. Kate Shaw, along with Devin and Terry, watching any other decisions uh, of importance, significant importance coming from the court. In the meantime, let's go to Rachel Scott, who is covering the presidential campaign. Obviously, she's outside uh, a Trump uh, event in Washington, D.C. today. And, and Rachel, uh, Donald Trump has actually talked about the abortion pill in recent days. Exactly, David. Right now, the former president is meeting with Republicans at the Capitol Hill Club behind me, just blocks away from the U.S. Capitol. The former president has been asked about the issue of abortion repeatedly over the last several weeks. He said recently that he has strong views on whether the abortion pill mifepristone should be further restricted. He insisted that he would be releasing his policy on that weeks ago. So far, the Trump campaign and the former president has, has not released anything on whether the former president believes that this pill should be further restricted. It is Donald Trump who, of course, appointed three of the five Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe versus Wade. And that is a big part of his legacy. It's a big reason why President Joe Biden has campaigned on the issue of abortion rights, putting the blame squarely on Donald Trump uh, for some of the consequences that we are seeing ripple across the nation. Big picture here, David, this is absolutely critical. 21 states have severely restricted access to abortion since Roe versus Wade was overturned. 14 states have near total bans on abortion. 
abortion. But the reason why this decision uh, certainly matters here is because if if the Supreme Court decided that Mifepristone, the abortion pill used in more than half of abortions in the United States, could be further restricted, that would have had a major impact even in states where abortion is currently legal. And so as of now, uh, people will still be able to access the abortion pill, Mifepristone, by mail without multiple doctor's appointments as well. And that is critical. It's something that many uh, abortion providers were concerned about heading into this. This is the first time that we are seeing the Supreme Court weigh in on this issue since Roe versus Wade was overturned. And obviously, they are also considering another case about whether hospitals can turn away patients who desperately need a medical abortion care, David. Rachel, just uh, real quickly, uh, since we're covering this presidential race so closely, it is essentially tied in the national polling between Donald Trump uh, and President Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, as each day goes by, one of them is one point ahead of the other, and it switches back and forth. We know this will come down to the battleground states that determine the Electoral College. Yeah. And in those states, uh, in many of those cases, uh, Donald Trump shows some strength, a couple of head, points ahead of uh, President Biden. That's why the issue of abortion rights, any one of these issues could be a turning point because the election will be decided sort of on the margins here. So when we're talking about abortion rights in this country, uh, let's uh, bring mm -hmm. people up to speed in both camps very quickly here. Former President Trump said in recent days that he would have a lot more to say about abortion rights in this country. Yep. Obviously, he's taken credit for the overturning of Roe, said he'd have much more to say, but we haven't seen anything really presented to the American voter here. No, and definitely not on the abortion pill Mifepristone. The former president teased that he would be releasing more on his policy on that. Uh, he has not gone any further. He also left the door open uh, to allowing states to prosecute women who wanted to seek abortion. David, this is an issue that could define this election. We know President Biden will be running on it, but also this is an issue that is going to be on the ballot in as many as a dozen states, including several battleground states, uh, Pennsylvania, Florida, which a Democrat believe could be in play for them as well as Arizona and so Democrats are going to continue to run on this issue of abortion rights drawing a very sharp contrast to former President Donald Trump it is important to note here that in all six states where abortion rights has been on the ballot the issue of abortion rights has won every single time David and so we can be assured that President Biden uh, will continue Vice President Kamala Harris has been out in those battlegrounds mm -hmm. uh, talking about the issue of abortion rights in this country and so on the flip side they will continue to press very uh, hard forward uh, knowing that this could be a decisive issue uh, come November. Rachel, thank you for that. Let's get right back to Terry Moran before we go off the air here. Terry, bottom line, unanimous decision from the Supreme Court. As you pointed out earlier, very rare to use those words, a unanimous decision. But essentially what the court has said today is that the abortion pill, Mifepristone, the availability of it in many cases through the mail, will stay exactly as it is here in America. That's right, and, and that is because the court unanimously, this includes Justice Samuel Alito, Justice Clarence Thomas, who have been so strong on the other side of the abortion rights issue, they too, because it has to do with how people get to court. Uh, you have to be genuinely injured for the court to examine something. And these uh, doctors said their consciences were at risk if they had to treat someone uh, who had complications from mif mifepristone. And the court emphasizes that federal law contains many conscience protections. Uh, Justice Kavanaugh writing, federal conscience laws definitively protect doctors from being required to perform abortions or to provide other treatment that violates their consciences. And he goes on to say, a doctor may simply refuse. Federal law protects doctors from repercussions when they have refused. And so, uh, for anyone who thinks that doctors have somehow been forced now to do something that, that, object, that violates their conscience, their religious beliefs, the Supreme Court reinforces what federal law already says. You don't have to. Uh, what this does is say that in order to bring a case to court, any case, you have to be genuinely injured by the law, not just that you object to it. Yes, personally affected in some significant way. Terry Moran at the Supreme Court with the breaking news this morning. Our thanks to Terry, Devin, Kate, and Rachel again. Uh, the Supreme Court ruling unanimously that access to Mifepristone, the abortion pill here in the U.S., will remain exactly as it is. They have not moved to restrict it in any kind of way today.